Welcome to Cardiff. This is the capital of Wales and as such is the administrative and cultural hub of the country. As you see of arcades, museums, castles and history, it's also a massive student hub and there are several universities here. And in today's video, we're going to show you the best things to do in Cardiff, including some hidden gems. The history of Cardiff Castle dates back over 2,000 years. Originally, during the 3rd century, there was a Roman fort here on site, as it's one of the highest hills in the Cardiff area. In the 11th century, a Moss and Bailey castle was constructed by the Norman conquerors, probably at the behest of William the Conqueror. This was then replaced in the 12th century by a stone castle. Today, what you see is a medieval castle and also a Victorian Gothic Revival mansion house. The keep dates all the way back to the 11th century. This is on an artificial hill and it was probably constructed in around 1080, though it was replaced by a stone building in the 1130s. We can go up and look at it now. If you think that the stairs going up to the keep are narrow today, these are the original ones. They are so small and narrow and very steep. From the top here, we have amazing views all over Cardiff, including onto Principality Stadium, which is home to the Welsh National Rugby Union team, and is also a really important venue for all sorts of events, including music concerts. Now that we've seen the Norman portion of the castle, we're going to go into the Victorian portion. This section is truly amazing. You can go inside the interior. And it was basically in the 1800s, William Burgess was given free reign to redesign everything. And so it's Gothic Victorian revival inside. As well as designing the interior of the house that we just saw, William Burgess also designed this amazing clock tower. It was designed in 1866 and then built towards the beginning of the 1870s. At this time, it caused such a sensation and a stir because people weren't really used to the bold, bright colors, the heraldry. Look how ornate this is. <laughs> you do have to pay to visit the castle. It's 15 pounds, over 15 pounds, which means it's kind of pricey, but you can spend a few hours here and it's truly a magical piece of history. Essentially, there are two ways that you can see the castle. The first is to go on a self-guided tour, so the ticket's a bit cheap for that. And then the other way is to go on a guided tour. This way you get to access rooms that are hidden away and not generally accessible to the public. Cardiff Castle is also often home to summer events, which is why you can see all of the stalls out now. They're not here normally, so during your visit, you probably won't see them. As much as I would have liked to have stayed in the castle for longer, we're gonna go and see another hidden gem now, just outside of the castle walls, so it's completely free to see. 
This is the animal wall and it was also designed by William Burgess but unfortunately he never got to see it completed as he died before it was actually completed. Therefore this is not his original design but it has proved to be popular among the residents of Cardiff over the past century and a half. It's very unique as you can see there's lots of different animals all along the wall. They were made particularly popular during the 1930s when people named them like Priscilla the Pelican, Romulus and Remus after the wolves of Rome. And let's go along and look at them now. Because of its position alongside the busy road, the wall actually had to be renovated in 2010. I'm also not sure if the sculptor had ever seen some of the animals that had been sculpted because there's a bit of artistic license going on in the uh, form of the animals. If you want to enjoy even more views of the castle, stroll around a green space and even enjoy an arboretum, then you can come into the Butte Park. You can even grab a coffee at this takeaway window to go on your stroll. Once you get out of Cardiff city centre, there are a number of beautiful buildings. For example, this one just behind me is the Cardiff City Hall and it's the seat of local government. It was built in 1906 in the Edwardian Baroque architecture style and it's right next to our next destination. The National Museum of Wales was founded in 1905. It's completely free to visit thanks to a grant from the Welsh Government. And so let's go and check out the collections which include dinosaurs, minerals, local history exhibits and more. St John the Baptist Church is one of the last medieval buildings here in Cardiff city centre and it dates all the way back to the 12th century. Cardiff is also known as the city of arcades because it has the greatest concentration of Victorian arcades anywhere in the British Isles. There's seven that you can visit. You see, up until the 1790s, the centre of Cardiff only had 25 commercial shops. All of this changed in the 1850s with the construction of the first Victorian passageway. This was the precursor to shopping malls and today they're full of eateries, small boutiques and they're perfect to wander around when it's a rainy day. So let's go and check them out. These arcades are open every day of the week until around 5 p.m. I think it's 5 30 on a weekday. And the one at Castle Quarter Arcade even has a balcony. The Royal Arcade dates all the way back to 1858, making it the oldest of the shopping arcades. It's now grade two listed.
Cardiff isn't the only city that has this concentration of arcades. In fact, if you're interested, then you can also head to Paris where there are over two dozen dating back to the 19th century. I'll link our video to that on the screen below. This is the Bay. It's a 20 minute bus ride south of Cardiff city centre and it's full of shops, restaurants, eateries, there's bars on the water, there's also a small Norwegian church and a few other monuments which we'll show you now. This is Mermaid Quay and it's part of the Bay and this area is also on the Wales coastal path which is very unique in the world because it's one of the only coastal paths in the whole world which follows the whole of the country's coastline. Cardiff and South Wales in general is a great place to come if you're a fan of Doctor Who and the spin-off show Torchwood. This memorial in particular is to a fictional character, Hianto Jones, who was killed off in Torchwood. Today, visitors come and leave their own memorial to the fictional character. Even though Wales is part of the United Kingdom, it's important to remember that it is actually its own country and so it has its very own Welsh Parliament. The building is behind me now and is devolved from the rest of the government of the UK. This is a Norwegian church art centre. It's an art and culture centre right here on the bay. There's art exhibitions and even a cafe. If you have more than one day in Cardiff and you're looking for another thing to do in the area, then the St Fagans National Museum is an amazing place to learn all about Welsh culture and see how different houses in Wales would have been built over the centuries. It's completely free to visit, but you do have to pay seven pounds for parking. This is basically one huge open air museum. You can get a map at the entrance for around 50p, but you can also just take a photo on your phone so that you can navigate the place. Each time that you get to a new kind of exhibit, it will be a house or dwelling that's been moved from somewhere else in Wales. There's handy information points in English and Welsh at each of the locations, so you always know what you're looking at. Even though we're only 15 minute drive away from Cardiff city centre, we feel worlds away thanks to the fact that the whole area is surrounded by beautiful forests and you can really breathe in the fresh air. This is also a great place to visit if you're not able to experience the rest of Wales because you can see architecture from all over the country. I can see you doing your hair in the background, Antoine. <laughs> One of the more interesting things that you can see here is a pub that dates back to the early 1900s. This pub in particular was actually closed in 2012 and then moved here brick by brick. Today, you can even buy pints in it. One of the most interesting aspects is that there's sawdust all over the floor. And that's because back in 1915, people would come up from the coal foundries and they would chew tobacco and then they were meant to spit in these things called spittoons by the fireplace, but they would just spit on the floor. And so the bar owner was forced to kind of sweep out the sawdust every day and then replace it just so that it maintained kind of a sense of cleanliness. Today, customers are not encouraged to do that.
Next door, there's another building that's been moved here brick by brick, and it was workmen in the community who founded houses like the one behind me. And this would have been really the community hub where there was a library, places to play things like blackjack, also just a giant hall upstairs for different kinds of celebration. There's actually only a few sites here in the area which were actually here originally and haven't been moved here brick by brick. And that includes a manor house, which we'll see in a bit. We've now entered into the castle grounds area of the museum. This is the oldest part because the manor slash castle that was here before is still here and you can visit it. There's also a mill dating back to the mid 18th century and some beautiful gardens to explore. I think one of the best things about visiting this open air museum is that you really get a sense of how people in Wales lived in different periods. So for example, this long house dates all the way back to the 15th century. Obviously it's a reconstruction, but in the day people would have lived on one end and their cattle would have lived in the same building on the other. And when you go in, you can really see that separation between home and farm. We're now going to try a Welsh cake, which Antoine already took a bite out of. It doesn't, they don't sell them like this. It's uh, kind of like a scone, but flat, as you can see, and it's got raisins. I don't know if you're meant to eat it with something else. Unique texture. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more UK travel content. See you next time.